Welcome to Gossip About Gossip, powered by Hedera Hashgraph. In each episode, we'll cut through the hype of blockchain promises and explore real-world examples of organizations creating the next generation of decentralized applications, which will bring trust back to the internet for us all. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Gossip About Gossip, the podcast where we talk about the actual use cases of distributed ledger technology in the real world. My name is Zenobia Godschalk, and I'm the SVP of Communications at Swirls Labs, helping to drive the growth of the Hedera ecosystem. Today, I am joined by Christopher Ansara from Docstribute. Hi, Christopher. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Good, good. Um, so tell us a little bit about Docstribute, how you started, and your role there. Yeah, sure. Happy to. So, so my role is I'm the founder and CEO um, of, of LTAF. Uh, and Docstribute is our flagship solution. Um, it's a solution that helps financial institutions um, and adjacent sectors send regulated documents to their customers. I guess the clever bit is that we use distributed ledger technology to do this. Great. And, you know, what sparked the idea for you? We talked to so many entrepreneurs who have faced a challenge in their own lives. Um, you know, this sounds like a very real world problem. Yeah, I mean, my background is actually in advertising and um, I, I was working for a WPP agency and I've seconded into one of the large UK retail banks um, as a joint venture between marketing and digital transformation. And, and the role was really to come in and, and digitalize customer correspondence. Um, and, and essentially, there was two work streams to that uh, of the program. And the first was really digitalizing the pre-sales literature. So if you think about, um, uh, this was in 2017. So if you think about walking into a UK uh, retail bank uh, or branch, um, you used to see a whole bunch of product leaflets on the on the on the walls, and and it was about digitalizing those pre-sales literature or the product literature, and that was quite straightforward and simple to do. Um, but the second work stream was digitalizing the post-sales literature, so things like terms and conditions, notices of variations, um, and and that was really difficult to do. Um, and and I guess what felt like the most obvious way to communicate with customers from a advertising background and communications background wasn't available to me because of the regulatory requirements set up by the UK regulator. Um, and so that was kind of the, the start of it. My, my co-founders have also um, worked in the financial services sector and they'd seen uh, firsthand how much um, there was an over-reliance of paper in the sector. And and, and I guess c combining their experience and my experience was the start of the birth of, 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 of Docstribute, the solution. It sounds like a, a, a very big problem space. So tell us exactly what Docstribute is and what the benefits are for clients who use it. Yeah, sure. So, so essentially, if you're, if you're a financial service provider and you want to send certain documents to your customers, so be that um, uh, notice of variation, terms and conditions, or even customer statements, um, it's a regulated activity, and what that means is you need to meet certain criteria. Now, one of those criteria is that documents need to be sent in a way that they can't be changed. Now, of course, the digital ways you can do that, uh, but each digital way that, um, that to do this has got some sort of operational downside or drawback. Um, and that's essentially where we come in. We streamline the process. We make it a lot easier for financial institutions to send these documents to their customers. Um, and, and, and the benefits for that are, you know, reducing the cost for that, um, um, streamlining uh, or improving the customer journey, and also uh, reducing the risk around those the, that communication from a cybersecurity perspective. So there's a number of benefits uh, that we, we offer our, our, our customers. And you mentioned, you know, the fact that it was important to build this on a DLT. Why is trust so important for your customers? And specifically, why did you choose to go with Hedera? Yeah, I mean, I guess as a business, our core values are around sustainability, um, around transparency, and then and then obviously trust. And um, I think trust is is really important. Well, certainly in the financial services sector, it's really important. It's imperative for the success of any business, really. Um, but the trust is really around um, the distribution of documents and that what you said you're going to do, you're actually going to do as a financial service provider. And that's massively important. Uh, but having a secure record of that is equally important. Uh, and that's essentially what, you know, what we do. Um, and then I guess there's trust that you're doing right by the environment as well. So there's a lot of um, noise in this um, around, a lot of emphasis on reducing our carbon emissions. So we have massive um, concerns around uh, global warming and the impact on our environments and our behavior, how that's impacting the environment. So there's a trust that 
organizations are doing their bit to, 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 to really um, drive down those carbon emissions. And that was one of the key reasons for us to choose, choose choosing Adera. Um, there's no point in us uh, replacing, you know, energy sapping solutions uh, or, 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 you know, you know, loads of paper and carbon emissions with an energy sapping solution. And so we had to find the most energy efficient solution. And that for us, the obvious choice was, was Hedera. Um, so that was kind of the, the key reasons. I mean, obviously there's other things like the governance around your governing council and, um, and the transaction speeds and all those sorts of great things as well. But I think the, the start, the starting point for us was, was trust and trust around, um, uh, uh the, the carbon emissions and reducing those carbon emissions. Yeah, it would be hard to um, hard to you know replace a paper solution with something that was um, less environmentally friendly, right? Yeah, of, of course. And I mean, the industry in the UK is massively reliant on paper. As I said, I think they send out something like five point two billion documents on an annual basis at a, at a massive cost, not just financially, but also in terms of carbon emissions. So being able to reduce that that, that, that reliance on paper, especially when it comes to those regulated documents, from our experiences, where the main the main uh, use case for, for paper has been uh, consumed, uh, was really important. Yeah. I mean, we've had the internet for 20 plus years. It still amazes me how much paper documentation I get. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you've now been at this for a little while. Can you share with us, you know, both on the technical side and the business side, what that journey has looked like and, um, you know, maybe any lessons learned for others who are starting to develop on the network? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, I mean, we're it's obviously 2020 and 2021 threw up a fair bit of challenges for, for everybody. Um, I think we were f very fortunate in the fact that we were, um, initially backed by, by the UK government. So we were recipients of an Innovate UK Smart Grant, which is a government-led initiative to drive innovation in our sector. And that was, um, it came at the right time for us. Um, but but off, since then, we've, we've gone from, from strength to strength. Um, we've onboarded our first few customers, which is which is fantastic. And I started to see some positive results already for, for those customers. Um, but then also, I think sort of at a macro level, there's there's been some big changes in the sector. Um, one, we've obviously spoken about sustainability, and um, and in the UK we have the taxonomy regulation, which is due to come in 2024, and that's quite an interesting regulation because what it means is that that um, institutions will now need to start reporting on their carbon emissions uh, versus offsetting them, and that's really important in terms of how do you reduce them. And, and our solution really offers customers. Uh, a tangible way to reduce their carbon emissions, especially when there's an over-reliance on paper. But even in some of the digital alternatives, we, we reduce carbon emissions. And um, uh, so, so, so that's one of the key sort of macro uh, changes that, that, is, that is really driving forward our growth. Um, the second thing that we're also seeing is that um, I think there's a broader acceptance of DLT. So we're seeing that um, uh, in the financial services space particularly, there's an understanding that is beyond just crypto assets and, um, and, and cryptocurrencies. Um, that there's far more to this functional use cases for the technology beyond beyond just the, those two use cases. And uh, and that's also opened up the, uh, a number of doors for us and the fact that there's a real interest in, uh, and, and hype around around the technology. Uh, we call them cool currencies, but but essentially they are kind of cool currencies that, that, um, uh, that are really driving forward the growth. Um, and then from a technical perspective, um, yeah, we've had a number of iterations and uh, as we learn more and, and understand our customers' requirements, um, we were able to adapt and iterate, and, and, and that's been part of the journey. But I think fundamentally, um, the, the core of what we do in terms of the, 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 the infrastructure and the, um, the, the, the mutability around our document storage is the key. Uh, it's now adding um, functionality on top of that, essentially. Wonderful. Um, can you share with us what you have in, in store for the next you know, six to 12 months? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think for us, it's 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 moving just away from. Um, I guess where we started was just with you know public documents like terms and conditions and notice of variations. But what we're really seeing is the demand for those um, secure private documents. So the confidentiality confidentiality around those documents. So adding additional layers of security on top of those and things like um, SMS um, uh, verification or authentication, things like biometrics, um, all these sort of cool things that are we're sitting on top just to give that additional security to to the access to our documents. Um, and, and so that's that's one of the areas that we're focusing on. Um, we're also seeing a, a demand for uh, the digital signature space. Um, and so um, being able to offer a digital signature that is um, on, uh, on the ledgers is obviously something that is is massively exciting and a different way of looking at solving that problem. So that's in another area that we're, we're looking at developing and, uh, and, and quite far down the road. In. Very exciting. It sounds like a lot of different industries will be able to benefit from those solutions, um, you know, starting with 
with one, but um, certainly a massive opportunity there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, we, we it's one of those things that, you know, the, the, the trust elements are so important um, uh, when it comes to financial institutions. And so being able to have that, that consensus mechanism on top of, um, uh, of our documents is so valuable and, uh, and one that we're really seeing a, a demand for uh, in the sector. Well, thank you, Chris. I hope you will come back and keep us um, updated on your progress. Uh, it's so wonderful to hear all the things that you are doing and how far you've come so far, but we know um, there is much more ahead. So yeah. thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks, Anobi, and thanks for having me on uh, on the show. Absolutely. Have a good one.